Um, hi. All the previous presentations and all the presentations that will follow tomorrow are about big problems like clusters and uh, applications in OpenShift on top of OpenStack on top of uh, other things. Uh, my problems are much smaller. I, I don't try to you know, meddle with uh, the big things. Uh, I have my laptop and a couple of other machines that I maintain uh, for my kids and stuff. And whenever I upgrade the distribution, recently going to Fedora 27, I look at a list of packages and I think, okay, so what is this for and why do I have this installed? And then I remember that some time ago I had an urging need to install some software and it has lived on my uh, computer since then and it probably got more, of course it got its dependencies when I installed it and over the time while I'm upgrading uh, stuff and the software gets more interconnected, I get more and more dependencies. So uh, when I try to remove that software, uh, I see that I could save some space, but my goal is not necessarily the, this space. My problem is sort of mentally being able to grab the list of packages that I've installed. So, but I need the software. Uh, from time to time, uh, I need to look at some subversion uh, repository and I typically don't have subversion installed in my software. Uh, from time to time I prepare slides for conferences, I use DocBook, I some, somehow convert it to PDF. I need some setup for that, but uh, why should I have it installed on my, on my workstation, right? So, um, my goal is to remove the software but still have it available. And I mostly care about the command line tools uh, because they are easier and uh, yeah, because I, I don't use graphical tools that much and those that I use, I use fairly often. So uh, the goal since we are in this room and this is the track about containers is to move things into some sort of container and uh, yes, I'm looking at containers, uh, you know, in a, in a sense that uh, we've been taught, which is some change root environment, maybe with some uh, security properties. Uh, my goal is to be able to run the command and for the command to work, no matter if I have the image built recently or not. So my goal is to uh, sort of, uh, have the experience of having the software installed via RPMs in my workstation while not having it installed there. So uh, if we look at Docker, uh, you have the Docker daemon run running as root and when you create a container or start a container, uh, it will talk to container D, uh, that one uh, will fork some shim process, and that one will start the entry point of, of your, your container, right? And how do you tell the Docker daemon to start the container for you? Well, you talk to it using the Docker socket in Wadlib Docker or somewhere. And obviously, if you are able to talk to Docker daemon, you are essentially root on that machine because you can start the process mounting the whole uh, root file system or root directory into it. And if you have access to the host network and stuff, you are root. And Docker, by default, if you have it installed on your uh, machines, it does not give you any authorization mechanism uh, that would allow you to maybe limit what, what people can do. So uh, I want to run the process as myself. So uh, I have a testing machine here. So who is myself in, in, this, in this example? I, I'm a user, UID uh, 1000, I think. And my goal is to start a process in a container 
with this UID. So my, my first problem is that um, if I do Docker run something, uh, I'm not able to talk to Docker Daemon as I should not be able to, but I'm able to, to talk to Docker Daemon as root. So let's try that. Docker run Fedora ID. My process gets started as, as root. And I can use the option dash dash user 2001, 2001 to run a process S with UID that sort of I'm aiming for. Uh, so this, this, is, this looks really cool, right? Uh, so now let's try to uh, bind mount uh, testing users home, under, home directory to uh, the container, um, the home. So I'm taking home of the uh, home directory of the test user and I make it available inside of the container. I want to list it. Uh, I'm not allowed to do why. Because of SC Linux. So uh, by default, if you if you start the container, uh, let me start a container which will sleep for a while. We will be running it as as the user that we are aiming for. Um, um, it is running as unconfined. Oh, oh, where, where are we? Blah, 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 blah. Yeah, it is running as co container underscore t. And it even has some NCS values. So the Docker implementation sort of tries to isolate the different containers. Since my process that, that I started with is running as unconfined, I don't see that much harm uh, using something like security opt, help me here, label disable. And I'm able to access as myself my home directory by going, by starting it from root, starting it as a child of root's uh, daemon process. So th that looks promising, right? Uh, if you check what happens if you use that disable, it actually uses the SPCT uh, type. So you could also use the label SPCT explicitly if you did not like the word disable because like disabling as Linux seems dangerous and you don't want to scare the gods. Uh, so, if I'm not the root, but I need to be root to talk to the Docker daemon to actually start the container, how do I do it? Uh, sudo comes to mind. So, I'm able to uh, create a sudo rules where I basically say, if I have some script, which hopefully I've proof read, and which hopefully is fairly secure, I should be able to use sudo, and if I do it right, it will in turn invoke the Docker run with the proper parameters and run the processes myself. Uh, those parameters would be sudo uid and sudo gid. So I'm able to sort of jump out from myself to root to give Docker the parameters to run a container as myself. Um, the script that I would be probably running might look something like this. So my goal is to be able to run SVN checkout, and even if I don't have SVN installed for, for things to work. So uh, the beginning is just uh, let's make sure that we are not running completely random code uh, you know, on our machine. Uh, so if something is in user local share, container sources, Pass that I just came up with. Uh, subdirectory, uh, we will try to build the container from, from that location and then run it. Um, what I've hard coded with is uh, we're running the container as read only, which is useful because if you try to, if you start to play with it, you will see how many 
locations your software actually, or those scripts or command line tools, how many locations they actually try to write to. So from some time to time. Um, we obviously run it as ourselves. We, we disable SC Linux. And I've added some feature for, or some functionality for inspecting the image and getting run opts label from that, which allows me in one place, in the Docker file, to specify what my container sort of expects from the runtime. So you can put things like, yes, we need a writable TMP. Uh, otherwise, things fail. Uh, we need a terminal, and so on. So uh, if I'm to have SVN, and where are we? Uh, RPM Q subversion. Sub version. I don't have it installed, so I, I don't cheat. Uh, like, it's not obvious. Um, I can run check out, SVN checkout, and if things work right, I should, well, and if the network does not uh, die on me. Why, why, why? I, don't, I, I have it already here, but what's happening? Yeah, we, we start with SVN help. I mean, that should be easier. Maybe it's building my, my image, right? It's probably building my image. I probably uh, remove it. So we'll, we'll wait a little, little while, it'll, it'll come here. So uh, my, my goal here is to be able to create a Docker file, put a symlink to a path. It, it can be in my home directory, it could be in user local bin or something and then run, run the checkout as, as if I had the software installed. So uh, my goal is to be able to, to capture what I need about the environment for, for things to work in that Docker file. So I'm not here to show you Docker files. I mean, you, you guys know what you need. Uh, I know that for my XSL tproc, uh, I need, I want Docker slides, style sheets and, and stuff. I know that for my slides, I want this particular font to be installed. Your needs might be completely different. Let's peek at the SVN running. Oh, it's here, look. So it has built and it has started and now I'm checking things. So, uh, and it's the which SVN, which is, uh, as I've promised, local bin, uh, just assembling to that sudo wrapper. So what can we do with this? Um, one thing is I'm mounting the current, home, current directory. So if I'm in some directory, I make it available in slash data or somewhere so I, I can process inputs and outputs, not just you know, piping it into standard input output, but also specifying the file names. Um, what we could also do is uh, make home directory available. So uh, processing tildes or something like that. Because sometimes you have dot files, the config caches, something that uh, should be made available. What we could also do is sometimes you might need files in that, uh, in that image to be owned by yourself. So would it make sense to actually build those images specifically for a particular UID, GID? I don't know. Um, I tend to be going back. Uh, we could also not just hard code dash uh, or slash data, but work out the working directory directly from the image. And X applications could also work. And then, okay, so what's the proper secure way to, of doing things? Uh, I don't have Fire for, uh, Firefox installed, uh, but I should be able to run it fairly easily. It's on GitHub. Uh, if you have example Docker files, send them my way or use the pull request. But I'm, I'm not trying to make a collection of Docker files. There, there, are a lot, there are lots of Docker file collections, but what worries me about most of them is that they're very nice work in respect of creating the content of that image. 
But then you have that, and you will run it this way, and you, you have some run, seemingly random list of Docker run commands. So I was trying to think about how can I make it easy for myself, um, but also how, how could I make it secure so that I don't need to basically fiddle with stuff manually and make mistakes. Uh, I've, some of those things that I've uh, talked about as further considerations or something like that are actually in that repo as pull requests. So if you want to comment on those pull requests, we can have a discussion about well, the topic. So that'd be nice as well. And with that, do you have any questions? Because that's all I have. And I, I told you, you know, my problems are very small. Yes, please. Totally different trade-offs tomorrow, 10.30. Okay. Like, I think that more, more of us should containerize and talk about how we're containerizing. So that's yeah, so this is how I do it. And actually, for the past four years, the slides that I've been creating for DEF CONF and other conferences were done using this. I've only now sort of packaged it. But it, it seems to work, at least on a single user workstation. The question is, how would it work on multi, multi user setup? There was a question over there as well. I don't know. Uh, it hasn't been my use case, or I mean, you, you've seen that my problems are really small, and my solutions are really so sm small. So, distributing the the whole Python stack, interpret with maybe content throughout the team, it might work. It might not. I don't know. Any other question? If not, please, there's a list about lightning talks, and the lightning talks should be here in a short while. So I'll see you there. Thank you.